There are many things that we could speak about today as we celebrate not just Sunday, the Feast of the Lord's Resurrection, as we do every week, but as we celebrate also the great Feast of the Lord and his entrance into the temple, the meeting with Simeon the Elder and Anna the Prophetess. There are many things indeed that we could say. We could speak of the relationship with the godparent, but we've already said that to the kids. We could speak of the Lord's humility, of his condescension, lowering himself and obeying himself the law that he gave for everyone else to follow. We could speak of the Lord providing an example to all of us, for as he went to the temple on the 40th day, so too do all of us. We could even speak in complicated terms of the intersection of the old, dare I say, chauvinistic culture of, Medi of the Mediterranean world meeting with the gospel of Jesus Christ and finding itself transformed. For there is something quite interesting about the Lord's entrance into the temple and what we all do with it. And perhaps we will take that track today. So this will be an informative sermon, I hope. We know that the Lord went into the temple on the 40th day because the law required him to go. But if we look and see what the law says, it is very clear that the entrance into the temple in the understanding of the law was for the sake of the mother as much as for the child, that she was to bring her child to be dedicated to God and indeed to ransom that child back with a sacrifice of a young goat or if they were poor of two doves because it was understood that the firstborn child belonged to God. And therefore they had to make a sacrifice to take the child home again. This was the understanding of the law. Moreover, it was for the purification of the mother, as I started to say. And here it becomes interesting, because according to the law of Moses, if a woman gave birth to a son, then she was impure. She could not enter into the temple for 40 days. But if she gave birth to a daughter, she was impure and could not enter the temple for 80 days. If we don't know the Old Testament and the law, then we don't notice the marvel of what changes here. Because there are two things, three things that change. First, we don't have to bring a sacrifice any longer when we bring our children to the church. That custom has passed. We come to bring them to God to receive the blessings of the church, not to save them from being themselves sacrificed on the high altar. But more importantly, it is no longer only the firstborn who is brought to the church. Every child is brought to the church. And we no longer bring the girls 80 days after birth. We bring them with the boys on the 40th day. What does all of this mean? What are we to take from it? Many looking to this see a change, a beauty. We no longer, in short, come to the church. We no longer make the women who have given birth bring their children because they are impure and unclean and unworthy of entering the house of God. They come instead because it was on that day that Panagia brought her one son to the temple. And we bring our children to the temple, to the church, not because we need to ransom them back, Christ has already freed us from these things. We bring our children 
so that they begin their life following in the same path as Christ, so that they can look back and know that at every point they participated in the same mile markers that the Lord himself has set out for them. And above all, because we have done away with the notion of impurity, because we have set aside the idea of needing to ransom our children back from God who owns them, instead bringing them to him to receive the gifts of the church. In all of this, we see the first sign of what the Apostle Paul says, that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, but also there is neither male nor female. In the Christian church, there is no excuse given to glorify men over women, to denigrate the women and to give them less of a place within the church. And this is important that we should remember. And it is this feast that gives to my mind the clearest indication of this, because in the practice of the church from that day till now, the girls no longer have to wait 80 days. They are brought with the boys. They are brought in imitation of Christ, looking to the heavenly kingdom, not to the darkness of days past. Now you may say, but Father, we still have the distinction because only the men are allowed to go into the altar. And that is true. But what we often forget is that it was not so in the early, early church. Indeed, everyone, all of the lay people, went inside of the altar to receive communion in the early days of the church. And they received in their hands the body of the Lord, as the priests do, at the altar. And they placed it themselves into their mouth. And they went and drank directly from the chalice, the blood of the Lord, even as the priests do now. Men and women went inside and received at the altar. If you ask why this changed, it was not because suddenly they decided that women couldn't go into the altar. It was because of the superstition and the disorder that came as the entire Roman world rushed into the church after the conversion of St. Constantine the Great. At this point, you have many people in the church who are baptized and chrismated and yet do not understand and yet do not believe. So a farmer might, out of concern for his crops, foolishly, in ignorance, but still in sin, instead of consuming the gift he had been given, might place it in his pocket and take it home and put it in his field, which is not what Holy Communion is for. The Lord's body is for us to consume. Another might be arguing with the person behind them in the line and turn around and knock over the chalice and spill the blood of God. And because of these disrespectful actions, because of this, the iconostasis grew high and the priest began to give communion from the spoon outside of the altar. And the altar precincts were reserved only for the clergy and those who were needed to assist them. And this is why women do not go into the altar, not because they're not allowed dogmatically, not because they are impure and unholy, but because they're not priests. And if you want to talk about why women aren't priests, that's another sermon. I've already gone on too long, but the point is, as we see the Lord coming as a babe into the temple, we must recognize that in this moment there is a change, there is a transformation of the mindset and the lives and the thought of the people to whom the Lord came. And in this we must remember above all that in Christ there is neither male nor female, but all are one in the Lord. And then you can come to me and say, but Father, and that's okay, I'll listen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.